friends, good morning. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Lovely to be together. I pray that all is well with you. And I also pray that what we do today will be a blessing for us. I want to finish our little time with Galatians today. I'm basically working with chapter 6. And I'm working around a topic of doing good to all. There might be a few other little bits and pieces tacked on here and there. But that's where I want to go, this being the last. But for me, it's important, doing good to all. And to that end, I want to read you from Galatians, of course, chapter 6, and I want to read just the first 10 verses. And it goes like this. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary of doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Doing good to all In a sense, what we're reading here in verse 1, he's really saying we must take responsibility for our fellow believers in the church. When they fall, we should first try to restore them and not rebuke them. And that's almost counterintuitive for many people. Uh, When people stumble, sometimes we tend to rejoice. (laughs) And in a sense, Paul is saying to the Galatians, when people fall, try and restore them. And not rebuke them. As a child, here's a question. Were you ever caught red-handed? Whatever it was that you were doing. What happened when you got caught red-handed? Probably there was a certain amount of, of punishment attached to that. But in the same sort of context, do we rejoice when people are caught out? Or should we restore them? Humbly. And that's a curly question because our instinct, I think, as human beings is to rejoice when people get caught short. And in a sense, what Paul is writing here is, should we not restore people who stumble? Should we not restore them humbly? Because are we also not vulnerable to doing the same thing? Are we also vulnerable to stumbling, whatever that stumble might be? In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12, Paul writes, There but for the grace of God go I. And in a sense, we need to remember this. And I think this is what Paul's trying to say here to the Galatians. You know, let's remember uh, where we've come from. There but for the grace of God go we. Can we ask ourselves rather, how would I like to be treated if I were in that boat? If I were in the boat of having stumbled, how would I like to be treated? Maybe we can think along the same lines for ourselves. In verse 2, Paul actually says it. We need to carry each other's burdens. Now, burdens kind of has a negative connotation to it. But there are a few kind of burdens. In my mind, we can think in terms of work and responsibility. We can think in terms of anxiety as a burden, disappointment as a burden, sadness, sickness. And is sin maybe also a burden? Do we stop to think sometimes that maybe sin is also a burden? Think of a temper. Some people have fairly violent tempers. Is that a sin? We have to be careful about carrying one another's burdens because 
in the end, I think what Paul is calling us to is forgiveness. Can we be a forgiving people? Can we be prepared to forgive before we criticize? Because inevitably it's easy to criticize. Forgiveness is a little bit more difficult. So how are we forgiving? Can we love one another? Could this be carrying one another's burdens? Simply walking alongside somebody who's carrying a burden. Verses 3 and 4, in a sense, says, let's just look at our own actions and our own situations. Do we fall into the trap of feeling we are better than others? Because I think that's a trap. Do we fall into the trap of comparing ourselves to other people? And that can be painful. Can we reflect on our actions and behavior as being proof of our faith? Does our behavior and the things we do stand testimony to our faith, to the things that we say? Because it's easy sometimes to say one thing and do something else. And I think sometimes we all fall into this trap. Paul, in a sense, in verse 5, is actually getting to the crux of this. Carry each other's burdens. He says it in verse 2 as well. Carry each other's burdens. Verse 5 says, carry our own load. Each of us should carry their own load. Now, load in verse 5 is different to the burden in verse 2. We all have our own loads to carry, but burdens are something different. Load means duty or responsibility. And we must do our duty, as it is in verse 5. Each one should carry their own load. We should carry out our own duty. We must fulfill our God-given responsibilities as well as caring for one another. And I think this is what Paul is just trying to say to people. Can we, can we look at ourselves in the context of the people we are dealing with? And are we alongside people who are different to us or behaving differently to us? Or are we simply criticizing? Because we must do our own duty. We must fulfill our own God-given responsibilities. Verse 5, each of us should carry their own load. Yes, but at the same time, I think Paul is trying to get to us to understand that we can help each other carry each other's loads. I've got to carry my load. But it's lovely to know that there's somebody walking alongside me, helping me, even if it's just words of encouragement. Verse 8, whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Are we generous in our assistance, in our doing good, if you like? Are we generous? Because if we are generous in our own outreach, so we also end up refreshed. Verse 9 says, do not become weary in doing good. In a sense, what he's really saying is, why don't we call on Jesus Christ to be our source of strength when we are weary? And I think all of us have moments in our lives when we are weary, when we feel, oh, I don't know if I can do this. And sometimes doing good can make us weary. Doing good can be a burden for many people. And we tend, when we're feeling weary, to withdraw. And I think what Paul is saying in verse 9 is, let's not become weary in doing good. Let's rather realize that Sometime down the line, we're going to reap a harvest if we don't give up. It's easy to give up. It's not so easy to hang in there. And I think the Christian responsibility is towards one another, to walk alongside the folk who, who are carrying a load, 
walking alongside people who are bearing a burden, doing good to one another. Doing good to one another. I want to ask you in your own time when we finished here, in chapter 6 of the last verses from verse 11 to 18, Galatians uh, chapter 6 from verse 11 to 18, I would like to ask you to read that in your own time. It can be a bit of a challenge, but it's talking about circumcision and a few other things. But really what it's saying is, what counts in God's eyes is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Christ has filled my life. Christ is filling your life. The old gets driven out. The new is replaced with the glory and the joy and the blessing of knowing Christ as our Savior. What counts is that we are a new creation. This is God's dream. Paul's dream as he writes this letter to the Galatians, that we are a new creation. And the only thing that counts is faith. Chapter 5 and verse 6. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. The only thing that counts is faith. And then we become a new creation through love. Through faith, we receive salvation. It's not what we do. It's what's been done. And in a sense, I think Paul is calling on the Galatians to say, will you live your faith? Let your life tell the Jesus story and God will smile. Verse 9 and 10, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. What great words. What great words for me to leave you with this morning, my friends. Let's pray. Father, you call us, in a sense, if I may use the words, you call us to be Jesus with skin on. You're calling your people, us, to just live lives that tell your story. And the only way we can tell your story is to reach out to one another in love, to help, to pick up, to challenge to heal, to pray, to carry. All of this because you loved us first. And we love you, Lord, and we want to just serve you as best we can. Thank you uh, for the time uh, that we've shared today, just under the title, Doing Good to All People. May it be that we can take this back into our day today, O Lord, and into the week that lies ahead. We pray this. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, friends, and have a, have a great day today, will you?